afternoon. My name is Jeff Passer. I'm the director of housing strategy. I'm here to present some of the information on Arnold Place townhomes that we're developing. Uh, but before I do, a couple of housekeeping items. Uh, we will be recording this presentation and making it available to the public. So if you'd like to go back to certain sections that you may wish to hear again, you can. If you are uncomfortable with this being recorded, please exit the meeting and you are welcome to find the recording posted on our website, or you can attend our last in-person information session at our university. Uh, second, we will be muting everyone for the presentation. Uh, however, you can submit questions that you may have through the chat. Uh, you are welcome to submit those at any time. Uh, we may not be able to answer every question, uh, and some may be best answered individually as opposed to during the presentation. So just keep that in mind. Uh, we may end up saying, you know, um, Jeff, that might be something to talk individually with uh, your IHP staff. Or if you're having any technical difficulties, uh, we'll be happy to send you the recording. You can email marketing at inhp.org. That's marketing at inhp.org if you are having any issues. Uh, so even if you came here or see anything, I promise you'll still be able to get all the information discussed. And last item, I'm going to say this a lot during the presentation, but this isn't meant to be all in copy The absolute best thing you can do is to go to IHP's website and click the Get Started button at the top to be connected with an IHP staff person to assist you. So with that, I'll go ahead and get started. So if you've never heard of INHP, we are a nonprofit based here in Indianapolis for over 35 years. Uh, our mission is to create affordable housing solutions for people with low and moderate incomes and collaborate to enhance the quality of life in Indianapolis. And you might be asking, what solutions does INHP offer? Well, INHP supports a wide range of programming across all sectors of the housing. Uh, so home buyer education and advising, uh, which is how we have primarily been assisting Marion County residents since our inception. Uh, consumer lending, so think more traditional home mortgages that you might have. Single family housing development, which we will partly talk about today. And then I'm not going to go in a lot of detail the rest of these, but we also do things like land banking, community lending, grant making, and multifamily. Our agenda for today, um, one, we're going to talk about the development history of the Arnold Place townhomes. Second, we're going to talk about the townhome features. Third, we're going to talk about the first look program. Four, we're going to talk about purchasing a town. Five, we're going to talk about engaging your agent. And lastly, we'll talk about being a competitive. So first up, the development history. So in 2022, INHP was selected as the developer for the project and acquired the land from the city to develop the Arm Place Town. In 2023, we were able to break ground on the project site. And in 2024, we began major construction of the project site. In 2025, we anticipate the first townhomes will be ready for sale. One question you may have is, who is Arnold? Uh, well, Mr. Ar Albert Arnold is Reagan Park neighborhood's um, resident centurion. He has lived in the neighborhood for more than 70 years. Uh, so with the neighborhood's request to name the project after. For this project, it's talking about some of the townhome features. Give you an overview of the site map. Uh, so we are anticipating up to 33 total townhomes. And the blue, those will be available early 2025. And as those transition to orange, those are more later 2025. We do anticipate all the homes to be built in 30 in 2025. So all 33 homes uh, uh, pending that we can secure sufficient funding to make sure we get everything. Done. Next, we have two types of units that we're developing. The first is the Hosford. Um, this is a three bedroom, two and a half bath, one car attached garage, 1,318 square feet, uh, Amana appliances. So this is refrigerator, electric range, dishwasher, overhead microwave, uh, luxury vinyl plate flooring. The Soho is going to have three bedroom, two and a half bath, pretty much similar except for two car garage and just over 1,500 square feet. Um, the first, uh, all these homes will be affordable to 80% EMI home buyers, and I'll talk about that in more detail later. And the second is the Hosa, Soho units, as most of those will be market rate with a couple available to 80%. So in the previous slide, uh, I mentioned AMI. AMI stands for Area Median Income. And for this project, the affordable homes that I discuss are going to be restricted by the income limits here. Um, these are set by the federal government, and we are not able to go a penny over these. Things. So if you are a one-person household, and you earn $57,651, then you would not be eligible for the affordable at 
can still purchase the market rate, but at least the affordable ones would not be eligible. For. The household size does include everyone that will be living in the household, regardless of familial relationship to the home buyer. So if your best friend is going to live with you, they would still count towards the household size and the total income for the household. The income limit also considers gross income and assets of all income earning members of the household. So if you're curious about determining your income or eligibility or think you're close and maybe want some additional guidance, you know, again, I'm going to be repetitive about this, but please start working with an IHP advisor or mortgage loan originator to assist and get a real determination of whether you're eligible for these loans. For market rate buyers, um, all interested buyers, including the market rate buyers, must attend an IHP lender options meeting. Uh, so what is a lender options meeting? So uh, this is meeting with an IHP mortgage loan originator, originator or an MLO, as I'm sometimes going to refer to them. What we do is we compare mortgage loan features from 14 area lenders and try to uncover what's the best options for you as a home. Um, and those exclusive options uh, are really going to be there to make sure you get the best deal uh, and you're getting the lowest payment possible when you purchase these homes. I'm going to pause briefly there. Any questions popped up? Uh, I'm going to turn to Kelly. Anything popped up in the chat? I don't see any, so I think okay. we're good to go. I'll keep going. And again, please feel free to uh, submit those questions in the chat as soon as you have them and, and we can come back to them. So next, I'm going to talk about the first look. This is an exclusive INHP opportunity that is available to our clients. So first look is exclusive to INHP clients, as I mentioned. That means you are using one of INHP services across our suite of programs. You may be part of homeownership advising programs or have taken an INHP education class or shopping for a mortgage in our lending department. Anyone involved in these core areas could have an opportunity to take advantage of first look. Um, I'll also highlight uh, our home buyer education course. We do have the in-person sessions. Um, if you are interested in attending, I think we are opening up a waiting list. So if you go to our website, um, you can be able to explore those. Again, those are other opportunities that can get you prepared uh, to make an offer in this home and hopefully purchase it. So what is the First Look program? So INHP clients receive first opportunity to view and submit offers on affordable. Eligible clients receive an email two weeks before a property goes to market. You see an example of that first look email um, to the right. Um, clients have an additional three days to work with their agent to submit an offer to INHB, and INHB chooses the best offer of those. So keep in mind, this is going to go to you. Um, so keep a, keep a lookout in your email for these to come through. If you're not sure if you're receiving the INHB uh, first look emails and think you should, talk to the INHB staff person that so how First Looks works with the Arnold Place project. So again, I mentioned the homeownership advising or the lender options pre-approval. Uh, both of these are going to feed into that mortgage eligibility and unlock that First Look program. Once you have that First Look program off unlocked, you can submit a purchase or offer on one of our affordable units. So if you're currently working with an IHB homeownership advisor or mortgage loan originator, ask them where you are in the process. Additionally, starting March or April of 2025, one or two of the Hosford units will become available each month. Um, and Hosford and a couple of those SOHOs, as I mentioned, those homes will come available once they are complete. Uh, and a couple of the SOHOs will be affordable, but it, as I mentioned, they're probably because of the larger square units, um, they're going to probably have more competitive offers. Um, so if you're holding out for a SOHO unit because it is a larger square footage, just keep in mind that you might be competing against more people because of the higher interest of those. So let's talk about purchasing a townhome and pricing and financing. So the real price for IHP uh, for these Arnold Place townhomes that IHP is selling. So we are required to sell the homes at the appraised price. That is either $350,000 or $385,000. But subsidy helps make those affordable to buy. But I do want to talk a little bit about why we sell them at 350 or 385, essentially the appraised price. Uh, the first reason is, you know, Miss Smith, who has lived in the home, uh, you know, in her home in the neighborhood for years, we don't want to artificially increase the sale price. And suddenly Miss Smith's property taxes are increasing because, you know, values in the area are going up. The second is we don't want to list it below market 
because Mr. Jones, who might have lived in the neighborhood for 10 plus years and is ready to sell his home, we don't want to artificially decrease those sale prices. And then suddenly when Mr. Jones is looking to sell his home, he's receiving less in terms of equity because the comps are low. Our goal is really to come in right at the market, to not art to not increase the market or decrease the market, but really just meet exactly where the market is. What's the real cost to buyers? So when determining the amount of subsidy needed, IHP will focus on how much a buyer can afford to pay each month for a town. And the subsidy may fill that gap. One of the things we're always trying to do is avoid housing cost burden. So INHB is not able to accept offers from clients that would cause them to become housing cost burden. And households are considered housing cost burden when they're spending more than 30% of their income on their mortgage payment. So what will INHB consider when accepting an offer? First, that household income compared to the income. As I mentioned, even if you're a dollar or two over, you're not eligible. So it's, it's immediately would, we would not consider that offer that you would submit for the home because of that. Second, we look at recommendation from INHB's mortgage loan originator. So is the client responsive, transparent, attentive? Um, these are all great things that we go talk to our coworkers and figure out, okay, which client is really gonna be best to work with in order to close on this home? Third, we're looking at the time spent as an active INHP client. So we, we, could, we would strongly consider clients that have been working with us for a year plus uh, over a potentially a client who's just started working with us this week. Additionally, we look at first time home buyer status and we look at clients that are currently residing within the Reagan Park neighborhood. Finally, uh, we also look at the amount of subsidy needed by the home buyer because our subsidy is limited. So the less subsidy needed by a home buyer, the stronger their offer is going to be. None of these items are, except for the household income limits, are, uh, you know, a blanket yes or no, or, you know, strongly, you know, if you're a first time home buyer, you're definitely guaranteed it. Or if you're, you know, uh, time, you've been a year plus as an INSP client, you're definitely going to No, these are all considerations as we look at these offers. It's kind of a mosaic that we determine of who the best offer is and which one we're going to accept. Before I start talking a little bit more about that subsidy is that last item. Uh, one of the things I wanted to raise was our market expander. Uh, all of the affordable homes do 80% AMI households or below is going to include a market expander. And what that is, is it's a 20 year fixed mortgage. So a portion of the sales price is paid over the first 20 years with a mortgage loan significantly below market rate. And the last 10 years is repaid at 0% interest with monthly payments deferred until the last 10 years of the month. So what this means is you're going to have a discounted interest rate for those first 20 years. That's gonna be lower than what you're gonna see for the first, for a traditional 30 year mortgage. And then for those last 10 year loan, you're gonna be at 0% uh, interest rate, uh, which obviously is going to be more competitive than anything else you could find. I wanted to walk through an example of what a potential household might be. And again, this is an example only. An INHP mortgage loan originator will provide you an individualized assessment. That's going to be really the best way to determine what your financial situation is going to be. So in this instance, uh, their one-person household is a household income of 57000 The maximum monthly principal interest taxes, insurance, and association fee is going to be $1,425. Uh, broken out into those four line items that you see below. That individual, uh, how their financing structure might work for the home sale is, uh, again, I mentioned the home sale price is going to be $350,000. Uh, client sale at, or cash at closing is going to be $7,000. INHP's DPA will be $140,000. The market expander loan uh, will be through the first 20 years, well, that will be a mortgage amount of $113,000. For the last 10 years will be about $90,000 with an estimated monthly payment of 1,416 and a total INHB subsidy of $200,000. So again, if you look at the max monthly principal interest taxes insurance association for this household, that's $1,425. And we are coming in just under that at 1,400. So if we have a four person household, you know, again, the income limits are higher the more people in the household. Um, that household income for this example is $80,000. 
the max monthly principal interest taxes insurance and association fees uh, for this household would be two thousand dollars we look at a similar a sale price of uh, three hundred and fifty thousand dollars with clients cash at closing of five thousand dollars and IHP's DPA of seventy thousand dollars the market expander loan portion for those first 20 years would be a hundred and forty thousand dollars and then the last 10 years that mortgage amount would be eighty thousand dollars for an estimated monthly payment of $1,900 for a total INHP subsidy of $150,000. Again, these are just examples. Um, so if you have any questions, you're gonna work with your mortgage loan originator and they're going to be able to assist you. In that. Uh, but one of the last things I wanna note is I made reference on that previous slide of one of the things we're gonna consider is the amount of subsidy needed by the bank that subsidy is limited. So when we're considering these two offers, this one person household is requesting $230,000, while this other household is requesting $150,000. So in these, this scenario, if we were only looking at the amount of INHP subsidy that is requested, this household would be able to offer a more competitive offer than the other example that I gave, because they're only requesting $150,000 in subsidy from INHP. Additionally, with this subsidy, we put in what's called a recapture provision. This establishes an affordability period and other ownership criteria for the home buyer in exchange for receiving the subsidy. If a buyer sells the townhome during that affordability period or doesn't comply with the recapture criteria, they must repay that subsidy that I previously referenced. And this is up to 30 years is going to be the recapture provision for these towns. To enforce the recapture provision, IHP will place a secondary mortgage lien on the property. And this lien will be at 0% interest and is forgivable at the end of the affordability period, unless the home buyer fails to meet the ownership criteria. So again, I gave that example of $150,000 of, of subsidy for this household. If they were to buy this home and we provided the $150,000 of subsidy, they need to be prepared that even if they sell this home in year 21, uh, you know, they've owned it for 21 years and lived there the entire time, been great tenants, et cetera. They still, at the end of 21, year, 21 years, would still need to pay the $150,000 back out of their sales proceeds um, that they received. So again, it's not coming out of your pocket, but it's coming out of those sales proceeds. And the buyer, you as the buyer would retain any of the principal you pay down from your mortgage and you retain any appreciation of the property during your time living in the home. So just to give you an example of the appreciation comparison, um, let's give you an example of a $180,000 home that purchase versus a $350,000 home purchase at Arnold Place. So assuming a 2% annual appreciation, which is, which is pretty modest, um, but I wanted to stay consistent for both homes, after year one, your appreciation, that again is all yours as the homeowner uh, of this property, you would have $7,000 in appreciation for Arnold Place compared to $3,600 for $180,000 home purchase. And then skipping ahead to even year 10, you're just under $40,000 for a $180,000 home purchase, and you're nearly double that at $76,000 for the Arnold Place purchase. So even though there is that recapture amount, you're still going to be generating a lot more in appreciation than you would traditionally uh, from a home that might be within your budget otherwise for these affordable. I'm gonna pause there and Kelly, any questions that we have? No questions, we are good. Okay. Next, let's talk about engaging your agent. So information regarding the real estate agents. So again, I mentioned the first look emails. So those first look emails are only sent to INHP clients and are not eligible for real estate agents. So if you do have a real estate agent and you're like, I really want them to receive these emails from first look, well, it, it's, it's ultimately your responsibility to share the email with the agent if you choose. That's, we're not going to include them. So just keep that in mind. That's, that's going to be on your responsibility as the INHP client receiving these first look emails. And keep in mind, you know, generally realtors are unlocking homes for you to view. 
for our first look program, uh, this is a little different because you're really unlocking these homes for yourself because of the work you have put in as INHP clients uh, to get to this point to be able to purchase this home. In terms of agent representation and compensation, IHP will have a cap on the amount of realtor fees that IHP is willing to pay for the buyer's agent. Any costs above that cap would be the responsibility of the buyer to pay. For Arnold Place, IHP's contracted agent is permitted to represent both IHP as the seller and you as the buyer. This is called dual representation or dual agency. So if you have an existing agreement with a realtor or thinking of entering into agreement with a realtor, we'll want to talk through this with them. This is absolutely your decision as a buyer to decide whether having your own realtor that represents you is more preferable. And hopefully they're able to be at or under the cap we have. However, you would, again, be responsible for paying anything above that cap if you sign an agreement for their fee. If you use IDHP's Realtor, then we would cover all the fees since we've already negotiated those savings into our agreements. It's completely your decision either way in terms of what is more beneficial to you as the client. Uh, the one thing I will say is that we and IHP are pretty easy sellers. As, as I showed, we offer down payment assistance. We encourage inspections. Uh, we'll address most of, not all of the items. We include uh, warranties within our homes. Um, and even when we do have issues, uh, we tend to address them. Um, sometimes we don't. For example, if um, you wanted a wall repainted or um, a bathroom remodel, we won't be able to do that. But if uh, you do an inspection and an outlet isn't working or, you know, there's something we miss, we're going to make sure it's addressed before you move. As I mentioned, we have realtors that are working on this project. For our affordable townhomes, we're working with Buy with Benberry Realty Group, uh, and their information is shown here. And then for our market rate townhomes, uh, we're working with Scott Estates, also with their information. And I think their information is also on our flyers and information that's within our website, too. Kelly, any questions relating to those? Uh, nope, we are good to go. Um, lastly, I want to talk about being a competitive buyer. So tips to prepare. First, be an active INHB client in good standing. Um, if you're not already an INHB client, you know, again, go to our website, click that get started button at the top, mention that you're interested in the Arnold Place project, uh, and you can move forward from there in, in terms of what the next steps are. Second, be mortgage eligible to unlock first look. Right? Make sure you're trying to figure out, okay, how do I uh, prepare myself uh, to make sure that I'm making the best offer? And am I eligible? And what can I offer when the homes do become? Talk to an INHP mortgage loan originator about what you need to be pre need to become pre-approved for financing. Again, kind of leaning into that last point, but equally as important, talking to your MLO is going to be one of the best ways to prepare you for uh, submitting an offer and especially a competitive offer on its own. And lastly, save for any down payment and closing costs to limit your required subs. Uh, this is always going to be important to make sure you are prepared uh, to purchase this home. With that, I'll, again, if you have any questions, please put them within the chat box. We'll make sure to answer them. If you think it's a question that's really specific to you, obviously we can work with you individually. Uh, when you start getting connected to IMHP, but we're happy to answer any questions that you all may have. Kelly, anything popping up? Um, I see someone is typing, so give it just a moment. Okay, great to see. Tim would like to know, where is Arnold Place? <laughs> it's a great question. So Arnold Place is at the 2400 block of Winthrop Avenue. Um, this is about a block from the Monon, close to about 25th in the Monon. Um, we definitely encourage, if you'd like to drive by, you can see the buildings under construction right now um, and get a sense for the size of the home, what the area looks like. Uh, but we strongly encourage that. Obviously, we can't show you the interiors while it's an active construction site, um, but at least you can kind of get a good sense.
See, the next question is, is there a specific order that classes need to be taken in? I believe I need to do the HB or home buyer education class as well. Um, and sorry if I went out of order. Absolutely not a problem. There is no, there's no perfect order. There's maybe a preferred one, but each individual is going to have kind of their own home ownership journey that's going to be. So, um, as you mentioned, um, you are absolutely welcome to take the home owner, home buyer education class. We definitely encourage. It is one something that is required for the purchase of our homes. Um, but we also understand that there might be limited classes. So again, as I mentioned, if you're able to go to our website and uh, look for our home buyer education class, and you can get on a wait list uh, for the next one that's available in person. Um, but again, working with the advisor, getting hit the get, hitting the get started button, those are going to be some of the best ones. Another question pop up is, can I choose finishes? No, unfortunately, we don't allow choosing of finishes. Um, the homes are as is. And uh, part of the reason we do that is because uh, we're trying to build these homes, get them completed, and get people moved in as soon as possible. Um, and we're not able to enter into a purchase agreement too early before we're able to complete those homes. So no, clients aren't able to choose their finishes. Anymore. But after you purchase it, if you decide you want to paint an entire wall magenta because magenta is your favorite color, that's all your view. I mean, that's that's up to you in terms of the interior. Obviously, the exterior might be governed by the HOA as a part of that, but it's still your home. You can still work within the confines of the HOA to determine that. We have one more, another question popping up. Uh, question was how much are HOA fees? So in ex my example, I'm giving 200. We're still working on finalizing exactly what those HOA fees will be. Uh, part of that reason is we want to make sure the HOA fees are enough to cover any of the costs associated to the ongoing maintenance of the property. But we also don't want to put them too high where they're suddenly burdening our house. Area. So we're balancing those two. We'll be able to provide those. Um, prior to listing them on the first look. So you'll be able to get a sense. And if you're working with a, one of our MLOs, our mortgage loan originators, um, they're gonna know pretty early on, we're gonna keep them informed. So they'll be able to factor it in as they're helping you to be a, build a career team. Other question is, can you go through the down payment assistance again? Absolutely. Roll back, please. So in terms of the down payment assistance, um, as I reference here, you can see I, I listed for this household uh, $70,000 in down payment assistance. Um, that down payment assistance is going to come from a variety of sources. We're kind of using the general, but, but we'll be able to work with you in terms of um, which ones you're eligible for to make sure we're maximizing the benefit that you can receive. Um, though that down payment assistance, uh, as I mentioned again, it includes a mortgage lien on the property for that amount. Um, however, it's not gonna require any payments. It's not going to increase in any interest, et cetera. Um, it'll, it'll cover just kind of that down payment assistance to help you be able to purchase them. So hopefully that answered that question, but I, I can go into more detail. Uh, another question about the HOA, what will it cover? You're right, landscaping is one of those, um, you know, uh, interior streets, uh, you know, exterior, all these things. And we'll, we'll be able to share those HOA documents. We're actually finalizing that HOA document right now. Um, so we'll be able to include it within uh, the first look email so people can be able to see everything that is covered by an HOA. Any other additional questions? I am not seeing any. Again, uh, last thing I'll say is, you know, I think we might have one more, uh, but just uh, just to reiterate, we're probably not going to be able to cover everything here. But when you work with an IHP staff person, they're going to be able to assist you. And uh, one question: How many affordable units will be available? 
Uh, so we've committed to 51% of the units be, uh, to be uh, available to affordable units at 80% of the area median income. And what that means is if we develop all 33 units, which we're, we're very strongly hoping we're going to be able to do, um, 17 of those units will be affordable to 80% gambling households. Not seeing any additional questions. Um, I just wanted to say thank you for your interest in Arnold Place. We're very excited about this project. Uh, we think it's going to be some great homes. We also think there's going to be a lot of interest in it. Um, but if you have any questions or anything we can do to assist you with this home or anything else, please do not hesitate to reach out. We want to be that resource. Uh, last question I saw is what is the first step to become a client? Uh, again, go to www.inhp.org. And if you go to the top, you're going to see a get started button. And that's going to be your first step. It's going to walk you through some questions um, that you'll be able to answer and better inform where it might be the best place for you to start. Uh, I do recommend that you list that you're interested in Arnold Place when you fill out that get or when you click on that get started button, uh, because that'll help us make sure we're directing you to the right place and trying to get you prepared to purchase this. Maybe one more question. So thank you. Perfect. Well, thank you again. Uh, we really appreciate it. Again, this will be uh, uh, put on our website, so available on demand. Uh, so if you want to go back and re-review re it, if you want to share it with other people, you'll be able to. But thank you again for your help today or for your attendance today. And uh, we look forward to uh, seeing you work with us soon. Have a great rest of your day.